Fowl has finally pulled his mind from the muck, so to speak. That is, he has finally extricated himself from the persona of Damon Handler, thanks to a little help. More on that later. His mind's still foggy. He remains calm and tries to ascertain as much about his surroundings as possible before taking any action. He finds himself sprawled on a couch. As he leans up, a book tumbles from his lap to the floor. Looking around, he realizes he's in a musty office. A strong scent of peppermint lingers in the air, leaving Fowl feeling alert and vibrant. The lieutenant's trench coat hangs on a coat rack near the door, along with his hat. The lights are off and the blinds are drawn tight, allowing only a dim luminescence into the room. He reaches down to collect the book, a single volume labelled T, clearly from an encyclopedia set. He sets it aside. That's when the door to the office is yanked open, and in steps a man silhouetted by the fluorescent lights above and behind him. Lieutenant, you all right, sir? The voice seems worried, concerned, and obsequious, Fall realizes. I'm the lieutenant. So he's no one? An underling. Think fast, Fall. Fall remains seated, but asks, why? What's the matter? The man replies, there was a brilliant burst of light from in here. You all right, sir? Fall thinks to himself, bright light. Okay, bright light. Keep it mundane. Engineering, science, magnesium. Yes, that's it. You ever burn paper and then burn magnesium, son? Fall asks the man. Sir, the man asks. Others are gathering at the doorway now as Fowl rises and crosses to it. Paper burn, slow gentlemen, Fowl continues. Not much of a show, but magnesium burns bright, crazy bright, an awesome earth metal. Just a work in a case. I'm fine, men, go about your business. Confused and murmuring among themselves, they nonetheless leave him alone again as he closes the door to the office. Fall doesn't recall much. He was in an alley and then left. The other policeman, Sergeant Smitty, was asking where his car was. Fall told him that Bruno had given him a ride to that area. Leaning against the doorframe, Fall decides to take a moment to gather his wits. Taking a breath, he lets the external into the internal. What he witnesses next is a continuation of the visceral environment that embodies the gritty realism of the bliss morphic resonance field of the 1940s and 50s noir world. A world that Fowl has come to expect during his brief visit to where her domain overlaps and influences the dim lands. Sounds outside the police lieutenant's office, typewriters clattering the rhythmic tapping of typewriter keys from nearby desks, punctuated by the occasional frustrated curse or the slamming of a paper. Footsteps on linoleum. The sound of hurried footsteps echoing down a corridor, some casual, some serious, depending on the urgency of the day's cases. Distant radio. A soft murmur of a jazz station playing from a colleague's desk, close to the lieutenant's office. Even with the main door closed, how the smooth saxophone and sultry vocals bleed through the thin walls. Talking shop. Muffled voices mixing with the sounds of laughter, gossip or heated discussions among officers, revolving around cases, rumours and the latest town scandal particularly of interest to fall the report of a car somehow getting on the roof of a theatre building. Coffee brewing, the gurgling of a coffee pot in a corner of this office room. One of the few comforts in a tough job is that the lieutenant has his own coffee pot, smells to entice us. How often do we overlook that which is always in our sight? That's right, my friend. That thing that's on the end of your face is always in your field of vision. But our brains all agree to filter it out. Well, let's bring it back into focus, shall we? 
cigarette smoke. The stale scent of cigarette smoke hangs in the air, mingling with the scent of the lieutenant's cheap cologne and sweat. Fall reckons these people either don't have deodorant, or the police lieutenant is a man who eschews such luxuries. Coffee. The sound of the coffee percolating prompted me to put this one high on the list. Fowl breathes in the bitter, dark aroma from the small pot, brewing on a table back behind the lieutenant's desk. Mixed with the smell of burnt toast, Fowl's alter ego must have taken from the communal break room. The toast sits uneaten on a saucer near him. Old paper, the musty scent of aged files, faded case books lining shelves right next to the couch lending validity to the weight of history behind each case a history fall knows only too well is illusory this world has only been alive for a few short years leather and wood the rich earthy smell of well-worn leather from the lieutenant's chair near the desk and the heavy wooden desk itself contrasting sharply against the harshness of the surrounding environment. This leads us neatly to objects in the office. Raising the blinds and flicking on the desk lamp, Fowl can better take in some visual data. Heavy oak desk, the large, imposing wooden desk aforementioned, piled with case files, a half-opened bottle of scotch, and a forgotten ashtray overflowing with cigarette butts. Framed photos, black and white photographs of the lieutenant's family, an old war medal and some newspaper clippings of a solved case, either pinned up for inspiration or ego. Buzzing fan, a rusted desk fan lazily rotating, the sound a soft hum, providing minimal relief from the oppressive heat of the stuffy office. Wall calendar, a calendar with dog-eared corners marked with significant dates, maybe a case anniversary or a reminder of payday, fall muses. Old filing cabinets, a couple of metallic filing cabinets likely filled with old case files. Fall slides one open for curiosity's sake. Inside, he finds many in the back labelled only with numbers, hinting at a shadowy past. Other officers in the main room of precinct Fowl inspects the characters in the outer room living out their lives. A detective, leaning against the bathroom doorframe, a fedora tipped low over his brow, sharing a quiet joke with another officer, a rookie walking by with an armful of evidence bags, looking wide-eyed and overwhelmed by the day-to-day -day realities of police work. A grizzled sergeant, that would be Smitty, Fowl realizes, barking orders or giving a rookie a hard time, a relic of old school policing in a gritty world. The call of the dispatcher from the main desk, relaying messages to the officers, punctuating the already noisy atmosphere with urgency. Oh, and this carries us nicely to additional atmosphere, dim lighting. The lieutenant's office, even with the light on, is not well lit, with only a single lamp casting shadows, emphasizing, I hope, the noir feel as light struggles against the murky atmosphere. Rain outside. The sound of rain hasn't ceased since fall arrived. It is currently pattering against the glass, adding to the overall dreariness, with the occasional flash of lightning illuminating the late afternoon scene. Hints of corruption. Scattered on the desk, and found, as fall rifles through its contents, are a few envelopes marked confidential or delicate, hinting at the murky morals of those in power here.